Hi and welcome back to Divine Lee Design Studio. For those that don't know, my name's Nicole Reed, and today we are here to play around with some more hexagons. So let's get started. Good morning or good evening everybody and welcome back to the channel. Thank you for taking some time out of your day and uh, spending it with me while we do a little bit of crafting. Today we are going to be playing around with all of my hexes that I got from a Instagram swap. I've had them there for a while so it's about time that I started using them. So we are going to make a pillow, we're going to just start sewing them together. I have created a template for you so that is down underneath this video in the show notes. If you're on your phone press the little V above the subscribe and uh, it'll drop down for you, you'll find it there. And if you're on your computer, then all you need to do is click on show more and it'll drop down there. So there will be a template there where you can just print that off on your printer and uh, you can get some of your scraps out too and um, make a lovely little cushion. Now, I'm not following any pattern directly or anything like that. I'm just going to be using my 12 and a half inch ruler as my template and I'm going to build my hexes out on that. I've got some other stuff to show you as well and we've got a little bit of update on my other um, projects that I've got on the go. All right so if you are new here and you've not been here before it's Thursday so it's crafting with Dee Dee's. This is a video where I work on stuff that I need to work on or I want to work on around the studio. So this is my humble studio here if this is the first time you've been here and uh, yeah we'll just have a little bit of a chit chat. I'll share some stuff that's come in or stuff that are other stuff that I'm working on if I've got any but for the most part I just work along and we have a bit of a chit chat. Sometimes there'll be a pattern, sometimes Sometimes there won't be. All right, so, and if you're a returning viewer, thank you so much for coming back. And if you've not yet subscribed, either new or a returning viewer, make sure you hit that subscribe button, the little bell icon beside it, and then that way you're not going to miss out on any future posts. All right, so what has been going on? There has been lots going on in the background. I am slowly recovering from COVID. As you can hear, my voice is getting better with every video. I still have a cough, and I still may need to cough every now and again. But for the most part, I'm not blocked up as much as I was. I'm still a bit snuffly, but not blocked up as much as I was I'm not getting the headaches now still really fatigued at the moment but I am on the mend and that's all that matters right all right what else has been going on um, I've been slowly but surely working on the borrow project and that is in the other room but I'll show you that on Saturday when we have an update on that I'm getting very close to a finish I reckon probably another week if I didn't get COVID it would have been done but I'm just taking it pretty slow and just if I need to nap I'm napping and yeah I'm just taking it very easy. Um, I haven't done any more on my stars and that is basically because I've just been too tired to um, and um, I'm hoping to get back to that this week so I've set some time down to do that. We are in the final legs of the row by row as well so that has all been happening. Um, that, that should be going up Friday or Saturday, uh, either Friday afternoon or Saturday morning. I've got a few little um, odds and ends that I just need to fix up and then that the final two rows will go out because the row eight is a bit late. But anyway, all right, so if you want to see how to put hexagons together, I will put some videos down below. I've got a little project there where you can make a little uh, mug rug. You can go and do that and I go through step by step on how to do it. Um, we also have the Crafting with Dee Dee's series where um, I've been working on the, um, I have it here, but I haven't done any work on it, where I've been working on the So Alicious Baker Trip to the Stars. Okay, and that I've worked on hexagons and stars in that one. So you can go and have a look at that. And I played around with uh, wadding before I got on camera and now my nose is really itchy. <laughs> Trust me mental. All right, so some of the things you're going to need today. You are going to need some one inch hexagons. There is a template down below for you for that. You're also gonna need your glue pen. If you're using the glue method, you're going to need some needles and some thread if you're doing the basting method. And of course, you're going to need a myriad of hexagons. All right, so let's swing the camera around 
and you can see what I'm working on. I'm just going to be joining them together and I'm going to have a bit of a chit chat on different things that have been going on on the uh, channel. All right, just bear with me for just a second. We'll bring that around. You should be able to see that. Do a little bit of adjusting. All right, so that's pretty good there, I reckon. All right, so basically all I'm going to do, as I said, I am, um, so you need your templates and you can see that's what I, another thing I wanted to talk about. These are made with um, your cardstock that you get from your cheap shops. You know, those packets. Um, it's a little bit thicker than paper, um, than printer paper, but it works really well. So I've got a few of those floating around. I'll find themed um, paper and stuff like that, and I'll just cut them up into hexagons. And then, as you can see here, this is my little container that has them all in. And you can see that I've just got... On some of them I've got holes. Some of them haven't come from me. The ones that have holes in them are generally from me, um, are ones that I've done. And then you can see here that I've just cut up some scraps. I've got a leftover charm pack there that I've chucked in there. And they're just two and a half inch squares. And basically when I'm bored or I want something to do or the kids want something to do, I hand in this and I go, go for it. Now, I don't worry about trimming off the excess. I just roll it over. Um, because it just gets caught up. It just adds to the warmth of the quilt, really, because it just gets caught up in the um, seam allowance. So you can see there how easy it is. I'm not going to roll any today or do any today, so I don't need any of that sort of stuff. What I will need is my needle and thread. So I'm just grabbing my thread. I've got my scissors. I have my pin cushion and my pins that keep stabbing me. <laughs> um, I have my needle threader as well that's these are just some of the things that you're going to need today and of course we're going to need hexagons so i'm not doing any rhyme or reason to this i'm basically just going to be sewing them together obviously i'm not going to put two the same next to each other um and as i said these are all ones that i got from when i was um doing instagram swaps so there's and this one these particular ones that are left i did the rainbow swap and i used that for a present for someone so i ended up using that for a present for someone and so i don't have any many of the rainbow ones left um i think i actually use them in other swaps and whatnot so this particular one was a text one so every hexagon had to have well that was from an animal one um, because we did an animal one, which I've used that in as a gift as well. And we also, at the text one, we had a rainbow one. And I think we had a black and white one too. So, and I've made that into a mini quilt, um, which is right up the back of the cupboard. And um, I forgot to grab it out. I forgot to get my husband on the ladder because it's right up the top and at the back. And my, I'm still too short to reach it. I need my husband to reach it, which is just ridiculous. But anyway, I'm only short. I'm only 5'4", so, which is not short, short, but, you know, it's still short. So anyway, we've got ones that, these are all ones with text on them. So I thought I'd just make a quick and simple um, cushion. So all I'm going to do is I'm just going to sew these together in no particular pattern. And I want to make something that is about 12 and a half inches. So I'm going to use my ruler as a template. And um, yeah, so you can lay it all out on your ruler if you want to. This is just when I'm playing around in the studio. This is basically what I do got some fall ones like I'll have a bit of a play um, I think we've got like Christmas sort of color ones I'll have a bit of a play around and um, see if I can't get some sort of layout and um, mix it up a bit like I've got a lot of black and white ones which I could really probably set aside which I may end up doing anyway and doing another table runner with black and white text this is pretty cool this looks like it's um, out of a notebook um, so yeah, I'm thinking that that's maybe what I'll do is I'll just pull all the black and whites out. But if it's cream, I'll just leave it as it is. Because I mean, that would make a really nice um, black and white cushion or a black and white mini quilt or something along those lines. So that's what I'm going to do for that. I'll just pull out all these other ones. Let's just separate them. That's probably a bit too dark, but we'll still leave it there. It's got grey in it. Oh, there's a triangle from a project I was playing around with. All right, 
there seems to be a lot of black and white so even this one um these ones came from overseas and they've used um cardstock and it had print on it as well so we got the print with the um <laughs> with the hexagons and then print with the um with the, the paper as well so yeah I'm still a little bit foggy as well from the um COVID like it's really bizarre normally I'm really switched on and I can have a million thoughts running through my mind not at the moment it's very slow going um let me just get all these out make sure that I've got all of my hexagons might have to make a couple more I don't want the papers I just want the hexagons See this one here, they've just used printer paper, so you can use printer paper as well, so it's nice and flexible. Um, I've done a, a recent tutorial on that through our row by row, just using the, the paper. It's a little bit tricky and um, it is a lot easier to handle the cardstock, but it works just the same if you don't have money to invest in um, the papers. And the good thing is that you can reuse your papers as well, like that makes it very economical. All right, I think I've got all my little hexes out now. They're all my little squares. I'd get in trouble off my best friend for saying me, like me and me mates. She always gives me heaps about it. Uh, so I've got all my squares, <laughs> just in case she's watching. <laughs> I'll get a phone call. <laughs> It'll flash across the screen in a minute. All right, all right, let's get all the black and white ones out because I've decided that I'm not going to use them. I'm going to use them for something else. So I'll put them away so I don't accidentally pick them up. All right, we want colour is what we want. See, that's got a bit of colour in it. Even though it's black and white, it's got a bit of colour, so we'll leave that in. I'm still really wheezy too, like, and I'm, I don't suffer from asthma or anything like that. So it's quite bizarre. I'm going to leave the creams in because that's not white. Um, let me just see, that's purple. Oh wow, I had some of this fabric years ago. That it was a um, breast cancer awareness fabric. <clears throat> and it's quite funny, like these have come from all over the world um, because I, I forget who I done, I've done the hexi swaps with, but I used to do like mini quilt swaps and stuff like that through Shopper Shaz. And um, she's on Instagram. And I think. I stopped doing them because I got super busy and I had Mia here and the last one I went to do Mia got into it while while I wasn't here and totally destroyed it and I was so close to a finish and the deadline was looming and I felt so bad that I had to pull out because there was no and it was all English paper piecing there was no way I was going to um get it back together because I had to recut all the fabrics re-sew it all and it was just not going to happen. So um, I had to pull out at the last minute, which was very disappointing. Um, uh, but it just couldn't be helped. There was nothing I could do about it. I wasn't here um, when it happened. I was out. And so there was not much I could do about it if I'm not actually here. But anyway, um, I used to do them all the time um, with Shopper Shaz. And there was other people too that did them. Um, I'm going to, even though it's got a little pink in it, I'm just going to leave that because it's really minuscule. All right. Yeah. So I used to do them all the time and I loved them. Like I got, so I might have to do a, um, a little bit of like a whip parade, not a whip parade because it's not a work in progress, a mini quilt parade because I got lots of stuff that I did. And then I, there's all mini quilts that I made as well that sent off to other people. So I have to get all the pictures together and, and um, that's going to be a while. That will take me a little while to do. All right. So as you can see, we have a nice little pile here of different colors. So I'm just going to start, I'm going to push them aside. And then I'm just going to start laying them out. Now, I'm, what I will say here is I'm going to go for contrast, okay? So if you're not sure what contrast is, black and white, that's a contrast. A dark purple and a light purple, that's a contrast. So I will go, I'm going to not look at the overall pattern, but look at the overall contrast of the, um, of the, the hexagon. So for instance, here we have a light, medium and dark. Okay, even though these are solid colors with the text on it, it's still light, medium and dark. So I'm going to go for contrast and I'm going to mix it up a little bit and we're going to play around. So we might not get any sewing done today, but basically what I'm going to do is I'm going to lay it out 
and then um, I'm going to lay it out on my ruler so I'm going to apologize right now for the reflection um, there's not much I can do um, actually that's pretty bad I will not worry about having that there <laughs> all right I will just on this piece of fabric here I'm just going to start laying them out and then we can add to it as we go so this way I can just roll it up if I need to all right so I'm just going to go I'm going to probably just look at it as light and medium I mean light and dark and we'll just start placing them down and start mixing them up and you'll get to you'll go, sort of start to see what I mean when I start adding light and dark and all that sort of stuff in so we can so you can see there don't, this camera that I'm using that's overhead doesn't have a very um, wide span so I can only show you sort of um, a little bit at a time which is very unfortunate might have to invest in another um, another like cheap prepaid phone with a decent camera on it I'm pretty sure that um, I am getting close to a um, end of contract as well so hopefully oh, there we go I like that one there Oh. Hmm. Doesn't want to play today. Oh, that works. Pop that in there and then bring that into there. And then this over here because it's got some brighter colours on it. And we got I'll bring a red into here. So you sort of get the idea. We're just this one's not wrapped around the card properly. I might just have to fix that one. But you sort of get the idea of what we're going to do. Okay. So I'm pretty... I just want it really random. I don't want it to be uniformed or anything like that. I just want it really random just to um, get the feel of, of everything and what's happening with all these patterns and whatnot. And then I'm just going to start sewing them together. And what it is what is what it'll be. Now... As I said, I want it to be about 12 and a half inches, which is about 30 centimetres for those that are playing at home that work in um, millimetres and centimetres. So it's a decent size. It's a pretty average size cushion. And then I'm just going to have it on my out here in my um, sewing room. And it's just a nice way to um, have a memory of the swaps that I did. Normally I have all my mini quilts up, but because I've been doing some renovations out here, they've been put away and that's why they're not out here unfortunately all right I'm pretty happy with like you can see how quick this is going to go together and I'm not getting too hung up on the fact of which way it's going or anything like that because the cushions is going to get thrown like thrown around on the couch it's probably not going to sit there the right way or anything like that so um I'm not going to worry too much about it might that black no that's too black I'm not going to put the blacks in they're too black all right, um, I think I need another brown, I reckon. Yeah. All right, I'm going to start sewing them together. So like we've done in the past, we're just going to grab our needle and our thread. Um, and I'm going to stitch these together. Now I am going to use a double thread. I have been told that that is not the correct way to do it. But you know what? That's the way I do it. Um, I just like to have two threads I don't know why it's just the way I've been taught and it's just the way I'm going to keep doing it let's get this together Probably would have helped if I had my magnifiers. I've so got to get to the... I was all ready to go and get my new glasses and then I got sick. I'm so annoyed. And then I bent my 
needle threaded the other day by accident. So we'll get some more of those now. You can get them on Amazon um, in a bulk pack. So I'm thinking I'm just going to get a bulk pack. That one there is a Dritz one. I think it's Dritz. And, um, yeah, that one's a Dritz one, and it's pretty good. All right, so I'm just going to pop that there, grab my magnifiers, which are just out of my reach. There we go. All right, and I'm going to start sewing them together. I was super excited when I got the mail um, after my last video. The mail came in and I, my Fat Quarter Shop um, mystery, uh, designer mystery um, came in. So I'm pretty happy about that and I'm going to sew a couple of these together and then, um, yeah, and then I'll uh, show you what it looks like. All right, um, now, I have my sew tight somewhere. <laughs> I've put it down somewhere and I don't know where I put it. Are they in there? No. <gasps> don't tell me I've misplaced them. No, they can't be right. Where would they be? Uh-huh. Uh-huh, uh-huh, uh-huh. Found it. <laughs> All right. We have our so tight. That's going to hold that in place. They are great. Thank you. Thank you, Shell, for introducing them to me. These are awesome. If you don't have a, um, a so tight, use a needle minder. <laughs> if you've got heaps of needle minders, um, you'll be um, happy that you did. All right, so I've had a few questions come in about English paper piecing. Um, most of them I've answered in the videos. Uh, one of them is the sew tight. Uh, what stitch do you use? The other, that is a whip stitch. That's all you use. I have been told that um, most people only use one um, a strand of cotton. I use two. Um, I've also... I've uh, been told that the glue basting method is not true um, English paper piecing, um, each to their own. There's no hard and fast rules. I mean, Sue Daly has made an entire career about English paper piecing and she uses the glue basting method. So, yes, while it's technically not how they did it when they when it first came about, it is how people do it now. So... While I understand your point of view and all the rest of it, um, glue basting is a lot, a lot of people like the glue basting method. That's how they want to do it. That's how they're going to do it. Um, whether it's right or wrong, I don't believe in hard and fast rules for crafting because everybody moves different, everybody creates different, everybody thinks different, and therefore there will be a multitude of different ways to do things to accommodate all those differences and I think that is absolutely fabulous. Um, I also had a couple of um, a thank yous about the, when I put the border onto my um, on the borrow project and I said left-handed or right-handed. I'm so happy that um, a few people got some benefit out of that. And it is hard for lefties, um, um, you know, like they've got to think everything around the other way, especially when someone's right-handed. For me, I have taught a lot of left-handed people because um, teaching in class and stuff like that. So I've always sort of accommodated. And most of my rulers um, that I use in a class setting are both left and right. So, um, and the OmniGrid rulers are great for that. I'll leave a link down below where you can get a pack of those because they count, they, they count both ways. So, um, I don't have one in front of me right now, but you'll see in some of my videos, the OmniGrid video, uh, OmniGrid rulers are awesome because as I said, it counts from, for a right-handed person and it counts for a left-handed person. So it's really good that they've, um, they've done that and you can also get left-handed 
um, rotary cutters and scissors and all that sort of stuff these days, which is really good as well. But I'll leave some links down below where you can get those um, Omni Grid rulers from. They're really invaluable, especially for people that are left handed. So as you can see, these go together pretty quick. Okay, so yeah, that was there. Um, I'm going to sew this one on. Um, I had a email actually from someone about jump threads, like um, like so. I, and this is a perfect opportunity to say is so you can see here I'm finished at this end but I'm going to start sewing at this end all I do is I just um, weave my I don't cut my thread I just weave it through without going through to the front um, and just do large stitches it's all caught up in the seam allowance it's just a way it's an easy way of getting from one point from point A to point B to start stitching again um, and then when I get to that point I will just do a quick little um, whip stitch and then thread my needle through that and I do that twice sometimes I get a bit carried away and do it three times actually most times I do it three times I don't know <laughs> I don't know why I do the things I do but hey none of my stuff ever falls apart and that's the goal right that it doesn't fall apart so but I've been wanting to make this cushion for so long. So I'm, I just, today, um, I was fluffing around in the studio. I was getting stuff ready for, um, filming some tutorials and stuff like that. And, um, doing some com computer work and I was fluffing around looking, I was looking for something. I can't remember what I was looking for now. And then my hexagons fell out and I'm like, you know what? I'm going to make them into a pillow. They have been floating around for far too long. So that's what I'm going to do today. I thought, well, it won't be all today, but I thought I'll make a start on it. Um, I'm going to make a, a project bag for this as well because then I'll have it. It'll probably just be a zipper bag that I use for cross stitch, but it'll work. And I won't. Um, and then, I, like once, once I'm not on camera and you don't have that reflection coming up, I'll um, take a, a photo of this layout and then I'll just keep adding to it. So that way, it doesn't matter if, and I can just roll this up and and um, pop that into the project bag as well. So yeah, but I've made a start on it now, and now I'm committed to it. Um, I won't be working on this every week. I'll just, um, I'll probably. I've got a couple other things that I've got to um, get finished first, but it's nothing like having a new project. And at least now it's started, which that will spur me on to finish it off. And as you can see, it doesn't take very long to sew your hexagons together. And before you know it, you're going to have a big piece of um, fabric to make your to make your um, cushion. So things to remember, make sure that everything's lining up. And when you come to your junction here, do a couple of stitches and just secure with a slip knot. And that's just where you create a loop with your, um, your thread and you just thread your needle through it. And that'll just slip down then and hold it in place. Sometimes you might have to just pick up a little bit of that um, hexagon there. But I'm pretty confident that I've gone all the way through. Oh, pulled the wrong one again. Just catch and... There we go. So I'm pretty confident that I've got that. And you can see there that I've caught all that. Okay. And that's what you want to aim for. I summed because I've not I'm fairly new to the so tight um, holders. I sometimes forget to use them because I've been doing English paper piecing for so long <laughs> without them that I forget to put them on like I did with that one just before.
Um, someone also pointed out that um, if you go directly across, I think they misinterpreted what I was saying, but if you go directly across, you won't see your stitches, which you won't. Um, but for me, when I'm going straight across, I seem to take too much of a bite and so I can see it. Whereas when I go on the angle and doing the whip stitch, I don't see my stitches. And um, yeah, so there's been a lot of feedback, which has been great. I've got some tips and tricks as well. Um, Shell's been great. She's been watching them and then she'll send me a message and go, you need to do this, this and this or try this. This will help. And um, yeah. So she's given me some tips on the stars as well, which I'll probably work a little bit of that next week. And I'm working on a little project, a little um, English paper piecing project for you guys as well um, in the background. So when that's ready, you'll have a little pattern there. It's a great little beginner pattern. All right, so there's another one done. Oh, that was vicious. <laughs> All right, so might add the black one in now. I do, I must admit, I do find these a little bit um, easier to use if I lay it down on the table and then attach it. I'm all thumbs when I'm trying to do it. <laughs> <laughs> it's not work <laughs> it does not work for me <laughs> but <laughs> in saying that um as i said i'm all thumbs <laughs> i tell you i'm so happy that i'm on the mend i'm getting so much stuff done i've got i've it's been good as well because i've slowed down and um i have done a bit of like i've I slow down, but obviously my mind's still going. Um, I've done a little bit of planning, a little bit of forward planning for um, 2023. Um, it's not concrete yet, so once it's um, concrete plans, I'll, um, I will definitely fill you all in. We've got um, a few things happening this year still. So we've got the row by row, as I said, which is um, finishing up this either tomorrow um which is friday or saturday morning um the last two rows will go up and that's both for um the quilt along and the um stitch along as well so that'll be everything complete there and then all of that will stay in the uh group until the 30th of september and then all the files will be removed so you need to get them okay and um then they'll be removed and then the um i've already started to put the like the little well it's going to be a book essentially because it's going to have quite a number of pages i'm putting the um the pdf together and um that way you can um anybody that wants to if they ask about the pattern you can direct them to um the website and or Etsy because I know some people don't want to buy off websites at the moment and because of problems with whatever they're having um so yeah you can get it on either website or Etsy I sell on both platforms all right so going to be so awesome when it's done so looking forward to it that so I said these have been floating around for so many years it's unbelievable see every time every time I start recording or I'm sitting here recording 
my husband will ring me. If it's important, he'll keep ringing back. <laughs> if I answer the phone, it'll stop recording and then I'll forget where I'm up to. And uh, yeah. So all the birds are starting to come out. We've had oh, we've had overcast and sunny rain. We've had a bit of rain in the last few days. Today is sort of, it's not sure what it's doing today. Did everybody see the uh, project bag added wristlet? I had a subscriber ask me how to add a wristlet to it, so I did a video for her. Um, that has been very popular this, um, in the last 24 hours. So if you haven't seen it, head over and have a check that out after this video. Don't forget to share with your friends across the social media as well. I would really appreciate that. All right, so basically this is what I'm going to do. I'm just going to keep plodding along and all the rest of it, but I actually have something that I want to show you. All right, so I'm going to just finish doing this one. And then what I'll do is I will switch cameras. And I'll show you what I've got. Right, so I'm just going to leave that like that because it's still got enough in it to add another one but there we go look there we go we're starting to get it together so you can see it's not going to take too long like an inch um hexagon the longest part of it is like the sewing it of them together is not that doesn't take that long it's it's pretty quick um I mean if I wasn't sitting here yapping I'd probably be a lot quicker but um you can see that like it's not going to take that what's that that size there that is that's about three inches yeah it's about three and a half inches by four so as you can see it's not going to take long to create a 12 and a half inch square um project so basically print the you can just print them off and i've put as many template uh, as many hexagons as i can onto a letter size um template okay so you can just print them off cut them out and start wrapping paper around them so you can see this is just printer paper um, you can use freezer paper remember as well so if you've got um, a four size paper um, for your printer just put our uh, printer because you can get freezer paper that on that but you might have to feed it in one at a time you can print that off and then just um, iron it on and and um, then you can use that and it's super quick to do um, Although that method really lends itself to actually um, basting it as opposed to gluing it, okay? Um, and and sometimes you don't even have to do that either because you can leave the hexagon inside it um, with the freezer paper and then just wrap it around. Um, I still would put a basting stitch like this one just so it doesn't come apart, especially if you're not going, you're just going to do a little bit every now and again. Um, so yeah, so that's something that you can do. All right, so I am just going to slide my ruler underneath this. So you can see there, all right, so if I wrap that around the ruler, let's do this. Okay, pretty much what I've got there is, so that's the edge of the ruler just there. It's pretty much almost all of it anyway. So I probably will get two with what I've got here. I will probably get two cushions out of it. So I'm just going to move that and it's really good if you've got a design board and I'll leave a link down below where you can make your own design board so you don't have to purchase them. I show you fr from start to finish how to make them. Um, so go and check that out, make yourself a design board and then you can make it in the size that you need it, which is the 12 and a half um, because all you do is you cut the, the um, stuff that you need to that size and then you've got a 12 and a half inch um, a 12 and a half inch uh, design board and then you can just use it for your um, for your hexagons and you can just move it around your sewing room and then it doesn't matter if you don't get to it my design board I would have probably I would have used it but it's actually being used for something else at the moment and I don't have a lot of room so I don't have a lot of design boards and the ones that I do have as I said are being used for something else but realistically I probably should get one and maybe it might be next week's to, um, thing to do is to um, make myself a design board. All right, so I'm just going to pack these up quickly. Whoop, I think it goes a couple. And um, 
yeah, I'm definitely going to have enough here to make a couple um, cushions, which is really good, and maybe even a couple of coasters as well. Um, so I'm pretty happy about that. So I love this little container I've got. This was actually a loom band container, and the loom bands, I don't even know what happened to that. It, they just went everywhere, I think. The kids just, they went crazy and made heaps of them, and then whatever was left just all ended up getting chucked out or something because my kids are notorious for throwing things over the floor when they were little and so it's really good it holds a ton as you can see and I'm not being very careful here at all but I usually this is full with hexagons eh, because I get all my scraps as you've seen and I just make them and then I just make projects gifts or whatever for people I'm going to take that out pop that there and I think I put my sew tight in there as well all right, let's just get them in and then it just snaps closed and um, stays together, which is great. All right, so um, I'll leave that there. I'm going to move this camera out of the way and um, I'll show you what I got before we head off. And I'll take these off because I can't see a thing <laughs> with my magnifiers. But this is what came and it's so beautiful. Like I thought last, that was last year's just there. I thought last year's was gorgeous and I'm going to be doing these on Crafting with Dedes because I want to get these quilts done because they're absolutely beautiful. And, um, <coughs> excuse me. And so this came the other day. So this is the, the, oh, this is the box that it came with. Okay. So they're absolutely gorgeous. There's the, the stripe from the top and then you've got the green and, um, on the back we have a peach pound cake recipe. Uh, so that's on the back. I can't remember what's on the other one. Um, yeah, so there is a recipe on the back, which is great. I love these. Shell underscore trails on Instagram. If you want to see some quilting getting done and lots of it and different varieties, go over and follow her on Instagram. She doesn't have a YouTube channel yet. Um, I still think that she should have one. And we have talked about it. So hopefully she will do that soon. But um, time is a factor too. She works full time as well. But... The girl is a prolific quilter. Like she does so many different, um, she's the block of the month queen. And I, um, I first started doing the, de, um, the designer mystery in 2018. I missed out on 2019 and then I got 2021. I missed out on 2019. I can't even remember why. I think I just, yeah, I don't know. I just missed it. But anyway, 2018 I missed I only got the blocks and I missed out on the finishing and all the rest of it which I didn't really care because I like the blocks anyway and the amount of fabric which I will go through because I'm actually in the middle of doing that that's sitting over there and that's one of the projects that I'm going to do on a Thursday um so yeah so a lot of the fact you get a lot of fabric left over they're very much well worth it I I am going to go out on a limb and say you'd get close to um double the blocks that you need so I have the 12 blocks for the 2018 one but I didn't get the finishing pack um so it's mine's just going to be a sampler um that with whatever I can match up to it um with whatever's left so I will just add probably a cream fabric for borders and stuff like that or I may just add them together I don't know yet because I missed out on all that sort of stuff missed out on the 2019 got 2020 um and I missed out on 2020 as well um, because I didn't I didn't buy anything in 2020 because I was concerned um, no because that's that was part of 2020 and 2021 I think I don't know when did this finish Michelle help me out in the comments so this is let me just have a look that's the 2021 um, that's last year's one Okay, I missed out on the 2020 because of the pandemic. I didn't want to spend any money because I didn't know what was going to happen, where, how long we were going to get locked down and all the rest of it. So I decided not to get it. Um, and I was just going to get the blocks. I wasn't going to get the finishing kit and um, all the rest of it. So I cancelled it. All right, so then I got last year's and then this is this year. So as I said, that is the colouring this year. Wait till you see these fabrics. Oh, my goodness. So inside the box... You've got a uh, quilt block, and this has got magnets in it, so it's a snap close. And then I um, got the finishing kit. So this has the fabric for setting the binding, the finishing pattern, pattern 
Um, it also has the marking tool, uh, alphabet. It's got the grey alphabeties and um, it's got the expansion pack and the keepsake box. So that's what I got for that. So we have um, the finishing. So this is the finishing pattern. Okay, I'm not going to, um, that's what it looks like. Okay, and that's that. Um, so they're the alphabeties that came in it and they're in the grey. And we've got the expansion pack. So for the, when you've got like lots of stuff for quilts and stuff like that, I've got another set of these as well. So now I've got two sets of alphabeties, which I got in the um, so sampler box because I used to get that. I cancelled that back in the um, back in uh, 2020 as well. And that, as I said, is the expansion pack. So you've got CCBB um, 11, 12, and that's what they look like. Very good. I love I love their alphabeties. I um, made my own ages ago. I seen them, and um, when I was like really really broke, and I just made my own with printer paper and laminate. So you can do that too. But um, I will leave a link down below where you can get them. These are a, these aren't cardboard or anything. They're like a, a plastic. They're brilliant. They don't fade or anything like that. Are you ready? This is the um, finishing pack. Okay, it's called Nantucket Summer. And it is by, can we see it? Um, it is by, it might be written over here. Nope. Let me just find who the designer of this fabric is. Nope. Okay. All right, it's under plastic, so I don't want to break it, but I'm going to have to to see it. All right, let's get that little card out. All right, it is by uh, Camille Ross Kelly, I think her name is. And it's, yeah, Nantucket um, Summer it's called, but that is the white. And it's blue and white, and there is also um, a green in there as well. So let me just which is the side of the box. So there's the green. Beautiful fabric, absolutely beautiful fabric. So that is all in there. And then I've also got my first block. So block one, and I've paid for block two. So that is block one, which just happens to be that block there. So absolutely gorgeous. I cannot wait. And there's the colors of the fabrics absolutely beautiful i love the blue and green together i absolutely love it and i cannot cannot oh there you go it is ros kelly i should have just read it on the front of the oh. so yeah um guest designer for this month is camille ros kelly so how this works is there's a mystery designer every month and um they make a block and then we put them all together and then we finish it off but i've also got i've got the finishing so um that is for setting and the binding and i believe i've got the backing as well so um i generally when the when it opens up that's um because i got the backing for that one they generally have that there so you pre-order it um and then you pay for it when it comes in so i pre-ordered this months ago one night on zoom with michelle um i pre-ordered it and um yeah and it's only just come so they sent the bill about a month ago and i think i mentioned it i was talking about it and said yeah i think that that should be coming but we've got the alphabetes i'm a little bit concerned about the expansion pack because that means that there must be a lot of um stuff in it so in this one here i've pulled out my um my fabric I've pulled that out and I've got all the blocks in there so they're all together and then as I do them I'll put them back in because I'll have more and more room in there and then I can put the finishing fabric in but I'm going to I've already started on the um, 2018 one and I think I've done four blocks of that and I cannot find block four anywhere but I've got enough fabric to to do it so um and I know that I got it because I've got the 12, like I've got all the rest. It's just somewhere it's fallen, it may have fallen behind here and I need my husband to help me move that stuff. So, um, but yeah, so I've just got to find block four and then I can continue on with that. But I've got all the other ones, so I'm going to do a few of those. But for now, I'm going to um, continue on with sewing the um, hexagons and I will bring the camera back now. 
we're back to here again and um yeah and we're just going to continue sewing those hexagons but how gorgeous is that fabric i absolutely love it i'm like oh my god i want to start it now but i really 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 have to finish the first one that i've started i don't like to have and i've found another quilt that i completely forgot about it <coughs> excuse me it was a um class that i was doing so we all got the we all bought the um the pattern and then we were we were, i was helping the ladies um they really liked the pattern and they wanted to do it so i said yeah cool no worries you buy the pattern and i'll help you put the quilt together so that's what we did as a class um for a few weeks and they came every week and they basically just plod along, along with it and um yeah and so we've done it so they've got all this finished i've even quilted two of them um which is the galaxy quilt i think it's called um that it's the big star that you've probably seen I'll, I'll find a picture and um insert it in here i've got that sitting up there and i don't know why i have not finished it because it's almost done i think actually what happened was i ran out of some color of fabric um and i think i've only got like four blocks to go in that so um four prongs to go in it because it's a big star so i'm thinking that i might actually have to pull that out and um see what i need i've sat it on top so i don't forget and i just completely forgot you know life gets in the way and and you know i had mia here and i wasn't doing as much making of quilts and stuff like that so um because bless her little soul she wants to always help but then you know she runs off with bits and pieces and then life just got busy and then i don't know i just must have put it aside and didn't think about it anymore and and then the other day when i was going through the stuff here it is all packed up in a nice little bag project bag and when i say project bag it's a shopping bag <laughs> they're my project bags for my quilts um actually i think it's a spotlight bag <laughs> and so yeah so i thought well you know what i really should pull that out see what i need which i'll probably do not this coming week the week after i've got a few things that i've got to finalize um first before i move on to that um but i've started this now this will go on a project so this will go into the rotation and i'm still working on my um soulish stars and and whatnot and for set um so um slow stitching saturday i'm working on a project for that which i'm not going to show here because that's for saturday um and so there'll be a little pdf there that i've created for you that you can uh, do that as well so a little bit of embroidery little bit of applique and for those that get super excited they can do the wool felt applique mm -hmm. I need a sip of water all right let's this is not going to take long at all I don't know what I was thinking it was going to take me forever I, I just you know when you get into like a you get into a mindset about something and you think that it's going to take forever then you start doing it and you go what was i thinking like i know that one inch hexagons do not take a lot of time but for some reason i've just left these sitting there for so long it was like i had i also done a, a swap where i did um uh 3d pinwheels and also pinwheels so it was two swaps and that was through a facebook group that i used to be in i don't think the facebook group's there anymore um and we used to swap quilt blocks and stuff like that and so one of them was there was a bit you know you get put into groups and there might be five or six groups and then you have to make to a certain specification um you have to make let's say 15 pinwheel blocks at six and a half inches or something along those lines right that's fairly random um anyway um i ended up doing a pinwheel one because i like pinwheel quilts and i also done a 3d pinwheel one now there is a tutorial on my um channel for how to make a 3d pinwheel and i'll link that up, up down below for you as well um you're gonna have lots of watching <laughs> um yeah so basically go and suss it out like they're so cool and um i'll bring the quilt next week it's it's i had to go mountain climbing for it because savannah's using that bedroom as storage but i'll bring it out and um show you but you can see behind me and i'll just in um switch cameras see behind me that is from 
a swap that that quilt there um that's just all the pinwheels and basically basically what you had to do was um your background fabric had to be white and of course there's some people that don't listen um and send it just a random gray one but um your background had to be white and then you could just use any color and i believe those ones are eight inch blocks and um so you make so for instance let's say you had to make 10 um and you make 10 and two blocks go to five people and then you also make two for yourself so in total you would make 12 okay and i think that's got 20 in it so it was a it was a big one okay so whatever you make for other people you make for yourself as well and then you um have the addresses because they put in and there's different projects going at all different times um, and so whatever group you're in, they will supply you with the address of the people that you need to send to. And, um, for that particular cluster of, um, that group, right. And so for a whole month, you start getting stuff in the mail and, um, you start getting all these, uh, blocks and, and whatnot. And then I made them into some quilts, but I had them sitting there for so long, um, so long, and I did nothing with them. And it was the same as the 3D ones as well. I had them sitting there for so long. So I ended up, Mia was here. And um, I ended up putting a quilt together. And we were going to sew buttons onto them um, together. But then she went back um, to her mum. So we never got around to that. So I've still got to sew the buttons. And I figured if she comes to visit, we can sew the buttons on then. And um, yeah, and then that way she'll still be a part of that that um quilt i've put my so tight somewhere and i don't know where i've put it so i'm just going to um <laughs> where am i here there um this one's got the freezer paper in it so it's um i've got to be a little bit careful that i don't go through the paper and if i do it should perforate anyway because i'm right on the edge but yeah so um I did lots and lots of swaps on Instagram and it was really good too because it was back, I was very active on Instagram with the swaps when Instagram sort of first started. Um, so when did that start? 2012, I think is my first post. Um, it was not long after Instagram came about. And um, so f during... Um, I think 2013, 14 and 15 and into 16. Actually, I think it was it was 14, 15 and 16 I did swaps. Um, I first became aware of swaps in 13, 2013 um, and I became aware of them through um, a quilt gr group that I was in and um, I thought this is really cool. Like we did bags and all sorts of stuff and and whatnot um we did like wall hangings and all that sort of stuff so um yeah so basically um that's how I sort of came across swaps and then my very first swap I did oh I've never seen her on Instagram since that like her Instagram's still there but there's not been any activity or anything and the quilt that she sent me was phenomenal and the amount of people that have wanted it um and then i did find what the pattern was and for the life of me right now i can't remember what it is but oh it was so beautiful absolutely be i was absolutely gobsmacked by um what she done for me i'll have to go back and have a look through my <coughs> excuse me I'll have to go back through Instagram and have a look. Um, and it was a black and white swap that I did. So it was black and white with a splash of color. That was our theme. And um, I did that through Shopper Shaz. Um, and I believe Shopper Shaz still does them, but now there's a fee, like you pay a fee now, I believe, because she puts a lot of time into them. And rightly so. I think I'm not sure, 100% sure 
of um, how much it is or anything like that because as I said I haven't done them for quite some time and like just sitting here and talking about them now I would love to get back into them again and I did have I was trying to get it um, up and running through my Facebook group but it was just so hit and miss um, people were like it was just it was a str- it was struggle street shopper Shays has got it down to a fine art and um, on Instagram and as I said, I think that she, um, you pay a fee now to be in the swap. But when you see what she does, I'm telling you that fee is well worth it. Um, and it's not expensive. And then there's other ones as well. Like there used to be pages that were just like accounts that were just dedicated to swaps and you could go and um, find them. But if you put in hashtag swap, you'll probably find a few things come up. Um, now I did a lot of them and I only had one instance where something didn't turn up and that was my piece got, like I had done my piece, I photographed it and you got checking points. So you got to photograph different points at time. Like she'll give you a, a rundown of what you need to do and stuff like that. But, um, yeah, so basically you have check-in, what she calls check-ins and you're just, you're checking in. So she's making sure that you're, doing the right thing that you're making the product that you're said that you're going to make there's inspiration boards there's um like all that sort of stuff and it's like I should write down exactly what we had to do so basically there would be an announcement of um that a swap was going to be happening and so you sign up for that swap and then um after you've signed up for that swap you would like you fill out a google form obviously and then you pay a fee now and um and then <coughs> excuse me and then you will get like your requirements um of your check-in times and all that sort of stuff so the first thing is by a certain date you have to put up an um an ideas board or an inspiration board or something like that and that um usually just you go into pick monkey or, or um collage maker or something like that and you go onto Pinterest and you find the things that appeal to you so people are making what you like so you're giving that your partner your swap partner uh idea so basically what will happen is your everybody gets assigned a partner and then your you don't know who your partner is or you might be in teams or something like that but you and then that team leader looks after that team and shopper shaz looks after the team leaders we've had a few of those um style ones i'm not sure how she's running them now because this is back in the day um and then basically um i used to head over to pinterest and after i um was assigned a partner then we'd have to put up our um design boards our inspiration board and basically I just go to Pinterest and find things that I really liked. And so if it was a hexagon um, or a mini quilt or something like that, um, so the black and white and splash of color, I would put um, the ones that I really liked, the colors that I liked, um, all that sort of stuff onto my um, collage. And then I'd post that to Instagram. Now my partner would be able to see it because my partner knows that I'm like, she knows who I am. But I might not be, even though she might be, um, she's got me, I might not have her, I might have someone else. So you don't know who your partner is, um, like who's making for you, but you are putting it out there for your partner to see. Does that make sense? Probably not. That's probably a bit confusing. I don't know why I'm picking up that needle. I want this needle over here. I'm not cross-stitching. Um, yeah, so anyway... We do that and then then we have to um, put up a, so we put up that post and um, and I used to put up about five or six different things to give my partner a really good range of things to work from. Now, it's not a shopping list. It's not this is what I want you to make. It is an inspiration. So, um your partner might make you something completely different um, off that's off that or she might make something that's on that board for you so um, it's just an inspiration board so it's not a shopping list as such um, or this is what I want you to make for me and it's not about that it's about receiving a gift in the mail and making 
you know, friends and whatnot. Like I still have a lot of people that follow me from, that are on Instagram, still following me today from those swaps. Um, and so once you've done that, you've put your inspiration up and you've seen your, what your, your partner's inspiration board, then you go about the business of getting your fabrics together and stuff like that. Like you also put in there like your favorite fabrics, your favorite colors, um, you know, things that you like because you ultimately are going to be living with that end result. So, um, yeah, so that, that's sort of what you do. You put up, um, all the different things. And then, um, I, then for argument's sake, you might have to have a check-in where you put up what fabrics you're going to, to, to use. And then, so you put up the fabrics that you're going to use, but you know, lots of people like the same fabrics. You still can't guess who's making it for who, and then you start making it. You've got a deadline, so you've got a time that you have to have it made by. And then um, basically you've got check-in points. So you'll have, for say, the swap opened up on the 31st of, um, of August, okay, we will find out who our partners are by the, and the closes, it closes on the 7th of September. We will find out where, who our partner is and what um, group we're in. And we'll find that out on the 14th. Then we have to have our design board done by the 21st. Um, and then your first check-in is on the 30th of September. Your second check-in, which is usually midpoint, is the 14th of October. And then you have to have your finished item by the 25th of October. And mailing out when you get the go-ahead is on the 30th of October. So, And you do this all with pictures on Instagram. And obviously you'll have, if you're in a team, you'll have a, a team hashtag. Um, you'll have to tag your team leader so she can mark you off as um, done it. And I keep catching my ruler. So with my thread, um, mark you off as you've um, checked in and then, yeah. And you just proceed from there. <coughs> then um, the last post that you will do is after you've mailed it. So you don't reveal anybody's um anybody's address or anything like that essentially what you're doing is you're sending a picture of the receipt that you have actually posted and um, you do this privately to your team leader um, and that's the last thing and then basically that will have a tracking because they ask for tracking on it um, and that's where one of mine which was a um, tied with a ribbon her vintage sewing spool I made it um, she, the, the girl I was making for actually put that in her design board and I had the pattern here. So I made it for her and I sent it and I'm so disappointed because it said it was delivered because it was tracked. Um, it said it was delivered and it never arrived at its destination. So either it was delivered to the wrong address or the post person didn't deliver it. So... <laughs> Um, yeah, so I was very disappointed that that had happened um, because if anybody has seen that tied with a ribbon um, pattern, there's a lot of fabric in that and a lot of stitching in that. And uh, yeah, it didn't make it there. And it was good. Like, and I didn't have to make another one and I wasn't penalized or anything like that because I had done all my check-ins. I had... Um, proven that I had sent it and all the rest of it so what happens in that case I received mine from my partner I didn't miss out the girl that said that it didn't arrive what happens is you have a swap angel so when you sign up you'll be asked if you want to be a swap angel now if you are poor for time I don't recommend you be a swap angel but if you've got plenty of time and you can whip things up pretty quickly then go for it and so basically what happens is the swap angels will step in. So they will make something and they'll do it in a week and get it out. So she doesn't have to wait for very long. It's just so I don't have to make it again because I've already made it. And if you check in all the time and you do all the check-ins um, and you've done everything right, you're not penalized or anything like that. Not, you know, you won't be blacklisted or stuff like that. There are people out there that have been, not with Shopper Shaz, with other people, um, 
I don't know of anybody that with Shopper Shaz that if she's had any problems or not, she doesn't make it very public. Um, but she will say to you in the Google form, if you are not, if you are signing up and you don't do it and you don't communicate or anything like that, you will get blacklisted from them. Um, which is fair enough because people are making stuff and sending it all over the world. Um, you should be able to, um, you know, you, 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 there is a level of expectation that you're going to receive something in the mail. Um, that, but that's, I loved it. And I, I did quite a few and not just with Shopper Shaz. I did the Hexagon ones. Um, they were just with random people. So with these ones, what we had to do was we have a theme. So this one was text. Um, and then there's uh, like the opening they open up the swap and they have it open for seven days. Everybody fills out the form. They might only have it open for three days. Everybody fills out the Google form and then you've got your requirements. So it was a one inch hexagon and um, yeah, so one inch hexagon, it had to be text fabric and um, you could glue based or you could baste it. it. That was entirely up to you. And then we have a central point that we sent them all to. So um, basically the ones that I did were all in the United States. Um, and I did a rainbow hexi, a text one, one with animals. I think I did two rainbow ones actually. Um, a black and white one. That's why I've got all the black and white, a black and white text one. Um, and so, and I had heaps, like I had, I had more than this container was full and then some, a lot more. <laughs> um, so basically we had to make, we, we get told after the swap has done, we know that we've got to make, um, hexagons. And so in that we would have been told you have to make 10 hexagons, 50 hexagons, five hexagons, whatever. Right. And you send them to the central point. And that's what happens. You see, you basically, um, you make the hexagons because you already know that it's with text. You already know that it's one inch and you're just waiting for the address to where they've got to go. And then you've got a time limit and then they all go to that one central point and then they all get unpacked and then they get divvied up with all the people that um, were in the, um, in the swap. I think the most I ever received was... Oh, it was a fair chunk of change. I think it was about 50 that I got. But I think I was actually in, in one. No, that was one swap. I think that was my first one. That was the rainbow one. Um, that, and they got all divvied up. There was a lot in that one. And that's, yeah. And then I had all these different fabrics that I didn't have to go and purchase or anything like that. They all came from all over the world. And, you know, sometimes they... Um, they might come in like if it was there was a couple of small ones that I did so they got placed to keep it nice and cheap um instead of sending it to one central point that got sent to like everybody had to send to the, our partner so um that one I think it was we had to do 10 and to keep the cost down we just put them in cards and so that made it nice and cheap um yeah, like I, I can't remember exactly how many we had to do. Um, but, yeah, it was really good. Like it was a great way to get all the hexagons. And as, as I said, with the quilt blocks and everything as well, I did it with that. And that was that was a lot of fun. I did, um, I did the pinwheel one and I did the 3D pinwheel one. And I did another one as well, which I think... I can't remember what happened with that one. I don't think it ended up going ahead because we didn't get enough. I think that one was, um, oh no, it was a four patch one. Yes, I did do that. And I just, I used them for table runners and, and, um, and whatnot. So yeah. And, um, that was only a small one. I didn't have, an, that wasn't enough to make a quilt for that one. It was only small. Um, and that one was through that Facebook group which I really enjoyed. And it was a great way to build my skills as well. Like I did a lot of foundation paper piecing ones. Like, um, I did, um, I actually did a swap with 
a lady that I'm still friends with on Facebook. Um, and, um, which I haven't seen her around for a while. I might have to check in. And, um, we sort of just check in every now and again. She's a quilter as well. And she was bu building a, um, new quilting room. And I did her a circular, um, compass style mini quilt. Cause I did a lot of mini quilts which was great because it was, as I said, it was a great skill builder as well. Like I never signed up for ones that um, I wasn't capable of or I didn't know something about about it. Um, foundation paper piecing was the one that I liked the best because it could push me right out of my comfort zone. And I did actually create a, um, from that I designed a quilt and, um, it was it was fabulous I absolutely loved it and I done it as a class here and um I didn't give any finishing instructions so basically we made a centerpiece for a quilt and I'll have to um at some stage pull up the pictures and whatnot and one of my students ended up building on that centerpiece like it was just a mini quilt that we were making and I didn't do like any fancy borders or anything like that but one of the one of my students um wanted to make it into a uh I think it was a double quilt she ended up doing it in and basically she did that and um yeah she ended up doing this phenomenal quilt and it was all in rainbow colors black and rainbow colors it was absolutely amazing um so yeah she thoroughly enjoyed that class and she really enjoyed making um the round the round templates like they were like compasses that we did and um yeah so i've done a lot of stuff through just through the swaps and it was a lot of fun met a lot of different people some people still in contact with some people not so much um the first swap that i ever did was that black and white with a splash of color she's never been on instagram again um i didn't send stuff to her because she she was I, she made for me, I made for someone else. So I never had her um, address or anything like that either. So I couldn't write to her. I did say thank you publicly and um, whatnot. But as I said, she's never been on Instagram ever since. And I don't know what happened to her. There was a couple of, actually, I tell a lie. There was a couple of posts, but um, she never responded to anything. But that was very shortly after the, the swap. And then probably a month after the swap ended, nothing on that and nothing since. So unless she's got a different account, I don't know. But, um, yeah, I'd have to look her up again and see if she's been active again. Because the algorithm, has anybody else found that? The algorithm on, um, on Instagram lately has just been dreadful. Like I'm, I'm seeing stuff that, I've already seen and it's like it's not updating and it's yeah it's just been really really weird um uh, hopefully it'll sort itself out but I think um I'm gonna call it a day because I just realized that I've been yip yapping about all of this for nearly an hour and 20 minutes so I'm gonna put this last stitch in I'm gonna keep doing this as you can see it goes together really really quickly um like I don't know what size I'm at yet, but like you can see there that that's, that's already like a decent size. And I'm just going to keep adding to that until I've got 12 and a half inches. I'm probably sitting at, it is um, about six inches. So that's about the halfway point by about three inches. Um, so it's not going to take too long at all. And I'm going to keep doing that. Um, and so I'll check in next week with that and we'll um, keep moving forward with what we're doing and have another chit chat and I will actually organize to get all my mini quilts out and we might do a crafting with DD's um <laughs> trunk show <laughs> of all the different things and most of, for the most part everything has got labels on it um from where they come from I'll have to do a little bit of research I probably probably will aim for that for the end of September because it's going to take a while because I'm going to have to go through my Instagram and if you've seen my Instagram I've got like three and a half thousand posts on there a lot of posts um a lot of photos it's also like the beginning of my um Instagram journey is also my um portfolio for quilting and stuff like that but <laughs> 
I will endeavor to um, get that all sorted and show you. I think some of you may be interested of that, just in the different swaps and whatnot. All right, so if you've made it this far, thank you so much for sticking around and listening to me ramble on. Make sure you leave me a sewing emoji or a heart in the comments below and uh, that way I know you've made it this far and thank you. If you are new here or a returning viewer and you've yet to subscribe, please hit that subscribe button and the little bell icon beside it. And don't forget to share with your friends across social media. I would really appreciate that. But that's it for me this week. Have a lovely day, everybody. Hopefully you get lots of crafting in and I will see you all again next time. Bye for now.